Hi everybody and welcome back to the workbench. Today we're going to be building a RAT distortion pedal. The classic, very popular distortion pedal that's been used um, by a lot of guitar players throughout the years. Um, what I want to do today is show you how you can build your own. Now there's a fair bit of uh, information on YouTube about guitar pedals. Um, what you don't see so much is people showing you how to build your own pedals. If you want to build a clone of a pedal that already exists, if you want to do it to learn, if you want to do it to understand how pedals work, or if you just want to have a guitar pedal of your own, I want to provide that sort of information for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through a step-by-step -step process, how you're going to build your own Rat Distortion guitar pedal for a fairly affordable price. Now, I haven't calculated the total cost of materials yet, but I'll put it on the screen for you here now. I'm assuming it's fairly affordable. Um, and should provide a cost-effective alternative to buying your own pedal. So without further ado, let's get started building our own RAT guitar pedal. Now, let me just run through quickly what parts you're gonna need for this. Um, the PCB we're basing this build on is this PCB from Taita. It is a RAT clone uh, and comes with a very nice detailed build of materials, which I'll link in the description. Um, we're gonna need these caps here. We have film box capacitors, ceramic disc capacitors, electrolytic capacitors. There's 13 of them in total, so just check the link for that. Uh, we need three diodes, uh, 12 resistors of varying um, impedance, one transistor, the 2N5458, and one op-amp, the TL071. Uh, and we're going to need three pots, all of logarithmic pots, the A100K uh, for tone, volume, and gain. Now, we're going to need some other stuff as well that's, uh, yeah, and, and everything on this side of the page is just for populating the board itself. Now, what are we going to need that? other than that? We're going to need the 1519B box, which is one of these boxes. You can go with a bigger box if you want to, but this is the minimum size you need in order to be able to fit all three of the pots through the box. You can get these nice pre-sprayed uh, boxes or pre-painted boxes off of uh, Taida, which is where I, I got all of this stuff or most of it, uh, and they're fairly affordable compared to a lot of other stores. You're going to need a 3PDT toggle switch, which is one of these things for stomping your foot on. Uh, I have a PCB for it, which is an optional extra. You can get one of those if you want. I get this from Taita as well. It makes it a lot easier to plug in the 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 switch to all your functions on the board. So it, it makes the build a little bit neater having one of these. It's about two and a half dollars extra of Taita, this kind of thing. But of course, a lot of people sell these sorts of uh, three PDT boards. Um, now you're gonna need an LED for a toggle light. You're gonna need a resistor to go with that, a 270 ohm resistor. You're gonna need a DC jack, two quarter inch jacks for the input and output. Uh, an optional is an LED holder, and of course, you're gonna need some knobs to put on the pots when the build is complete. Now, all this other stuff that's not listed in the build materials at Taida, I'll leave um, information or links to that in the description, so just go take a look there. How about tools? Let's go through the tools you're gonna need. First of all, you need a screwdriver, a soldering iron, drill with uh, one of these, which is a stepper drill, pliers, any sort of pliers will be handy. So having said that, let's get started. Now, as a general rule of thumb, when you're populating these boards, these PCB boards, you want to go from the smallest to the biggest. The way you want to do it when you populate the board is what we call it, or fill up the board. You want to go resistors first, the smallest ones, and then work your way up in size. So go resistors, diodes, then maybe put the op amp on, then put on the caps, uh, put into the transistors, and you won't generally want to end with the pots themselves because they are the biggest thing that will go on here. So um, we can get started on the resistors and let's just solder those in. Now, pedal making requires soldering skills, so I'm assuming that you have soldering skills coming into this, but even if you don't, there's a lot of sources online which will help you to learn soldering, so you can take a look at those. But let's start with resistor number one. You have to just find R1 here. Just poke the resistor through the hole like this. 
I like to fold down one side of the resistor, shoulder the other one straight, and then fold the other side back. That way I can get them pretty flush. So it'll come up looking pretty good on the other side. And as I go, I tend to cut the backs off these legs. Do a final trim later to make sure everything is pretty under the board. It's actually a slight problem with R4. It calls for a 560 ohm capacitor, but I don't have a 560, so I'm using a 510. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what that'll affect. What effect that'll have? It'll probably be quite minor, but it might change the sound profile ever so slightly. Like I said, we'll go in later and clean all these legs up a little bit better, but yeah, that's a pretty good start there. Okay, so now that we got all the resistors in, it's time to start thinking about putting in the diode. So let's get those out. The diodes we need are a 1N914, two of those, and 1N411. So we have those here. Now the bill of materials calls for an N1914 diode. Uh, I don't have one of those, but I have a pack of N14148 diodes, which are very similar. If you compare the data sheets, they are almost identical. So I'm wagering that it's a fairly safe bet to put, in, put these diodes instead of the N1914s. Uh, and the, the sound will come out nearly identical, of course. If you are ordering parts for this for this build, I will provide links to the actual proper diodes, the N1914s. But I'm gonna get these uh, installed. Um, <clears throat> one thing you gotta watch out for when you're installing diodes is that this black band is generally indicated on the board itself. Now, let me see if I can get this in focus, yeah. There is a band here on this side, which indicates that the black band should go there. So let me see if I can point that out a little bit more closely. So what I'm pointing to right here is band. That's the black, that is equivalent to the black band, which um, basically signifies the negative or the negative connector of the diode or what we call the cathode. So just make sure the black band on the diode matches with this band here on the diode number one and this band here on the diode number two. I'll show you quickly how I set them up. Like so. Like so. So you can see here uh, on this side we got the, the black band is here. Diode number two, the black band is here. Okay, that's diodes one and two in. And on diode number three. That is a one and four double one. Diode number three goes in here. Make sure, um, and it's interesting on this diode, that band marking the polarity is on this side. You can see it's a gray band in this case because the diode itself is black. In that case, just match that band up to the band that's marked here. And just remember, we're going to come in later and fix all of these uh, poorly, poorly cut off uh, legs. Now, with that, the diodes should be completed. We got all these three diodes. So I'm just going to, it's, it's a fairly good just rule of thumb to cross out everything you've done. So you know what you have left. Uh, so we have all the caps left, the transist transistor and off band. Now the caps, they can be a little bit big, some of them, so I think it's a fair idea at this point to install the transistor and the off band. Now, there are two ways to install transistors and off bands. Um, because they are the parts which are most likely to get swapped out at any point, um, you, can either, you can either solder them directly into these holes here, the off band hole here and the transistor hole here, or, in case they break, or if you want to see what it does to put in other transistors and op-amps, you can use these kinds of seats. 
Now these are very affordable and you can buy you know a fairly fairly large amount for not a lot of money. This is a seat for uh, an 8 pin op amp. So you could just pop that in and then switch out the op amp as you like. This is the seat for a transistor. Um, they make it a lot easier to remove stuff. So in this case, I'm going to be installing them instead of just putting the op amps and transistors directly into the board. But uh, if you don't have these, it's totally fine to just solder the transistor and op amp direct directly into their slots. So I'm gonna just get this soldered into place. The transistor seat. Now the off amp, you just wanna make sure that um, before you solder in one of these, you wanna make sure you remember or note in some way where the where this dot and dip is uh, just to make sure we don't screw up the orientation later on. Here is a TL071. Um, it has a dip marking uh, and when you actually go to install just make sure that this dip here uh, corresponds to this dip here. So let's go ahead and solder in all eight pins. This is looking pretty good. If we just take a little bit of a closer look here. So with the seats in there, I'm just gonna wait to put in the actual op amp and the transistor. Um, it's time to just move on to the capacitors. After that, all we have left to do is the pots and then connecting this to power ground and the output and the input. So uh, let's get the capacitors ready. So we're going to need a lot of capacitors for this. What I wanna do is just do one type at a time. So let's get out everything that we need for each type. We'll start with the film box polyester capacitors we need a 22 nanofarad um, if you have trouble identifying these it can be a bit of a pain to identify these sorts of film capacitors let me see if i can get you a look at it there you can see there's some uh, writing on top it says 223 j100 the 223 signifies it as a 22 nanofarad capacitor it takes a while to learn these markings so what i would suggest for you is just look up like um Film capacitor cheat sheet or something like that. This is the one I generally have at the workbench. Codes of ceramic disc capacitors. And it'll tell you the code, for example, if you look up a 223, it'll tell you 22 nanofarads. So it's, it's helpful to have one of those at hand when you're working on this stuff. So let's move this off to the side and get soldering. So we'll take the 22 nanofarad one. This is C1. So C2 goes in here. Now these film capacitors are a little bit big, so we're gonna have we might have a little bit of a tricky time fitting them in with everything else that needs to go in here. So we'll try to uh, remain conscious of the fact that we still need to put a lot of other components around there. Um, but the links that I do place in the description of this build, they will be to make sure that you can get actually all film box capacitors. Uh, film box capacitors are kind of nicer to work with rather than these old film capacitors. And they are a lot smaller. Okay, now we're done with the film box capacitors. So we'll get back to the next bit. We'll do the, let's do the ceramic capacitors next. Let's cross these off because these are done. So we'll get to the ceramic next. We need a 30 picofarad and a 100 picofarad. 30 picofarads is here. 100 picofarads is here. And C4 is right next to it here. Get them both right in position. Uh, 
Okay, now we're getting pretty well along with capacitors. So the, the ceramic ones are done. So now we need the electrolytic ones. We have a total of six of those, three of these, and then three down here. So now, and you have to pay also attention to where uh, markings on these, because these will be marked with a plus here. Uh, sometimes I've also seen electrolytic capacitors marked with uh, the minus. Uh, just make sure that on the on the capacitor itself, it, it'll have a, a stripe down one end. That's to mark the negative the negative leg of the of the capacitor, or what we call the cathode. Uh, and also, the longer leg will be the positive one. So uh, we we'll get started. These are all. 4.7 microfarads here. So I'm just going to insert them all before I solder. Just to mention it now, we will go through the entire board later, or at least I would advise you to, uh, just to check for uh, continuity to see if you have at any point bridged something accidentally. Okay, now these three capacitors are in. So, okay, so number 10. That is a one microfarad. You can always double check with this electrolytic. They'll have markings. It'll say exactly what they are. So one microfarad, number 10, goes here. This is the 47 microfarad one, which is number 12. So that goes there. Okay, now we just need C11, which is the 100 microfarad one, this one here. Now, as you can see, every parts slot on this board has been filled. So in theory, we should now have a functional board, providing we actually install the, the op amp and the transistor. So let's do that now quickly. Um, it calls for a TL071 op amp which uh, you will be able to find in the description. We'll just pop that into the seat here, or in, your case, or in your case, you may have also soldered it directly to the board, like so. So let's now just put in the transistor. It will require you to spread the legs of it a little bit. Um, you may actually, because if you put it directly in, it'll stand very tall. So you may want to go in there and shorten the legs a little bit, which is what I'm going to do. That should be fine for now. I can always trim them more if I need later. It's easy enough to pull it out and put a new one back in. Okay, so at this point, what we probably want to do is to go through here uh, and make sure there's no accidental bridges and then trim up the back a little bit before we go to install the pots. Now to check uh, for accidental bridges, ideally you would take a multimeter and measure it against every every single connection that's close to each other like so. And if the multimeter beeps, then you know you've made an accidental bridge. Uh, now, I didn't specify a multimeter as a necessary tool of this build because you can actually get pretty far with just a visual inspection. So what you can do is just uh, go or, and take a look at everything back here. Just look closely if you made any accidental bridges in here. If anything is accidentally connected. When you're satisfied that there's no more accidental bridges, what you want to go and do is to clean up the legs a little bit. Now, this technically isn't a necessary step, but I like it to do it anyway to keep my builds clean. You can go through and take a pair of very small needle nose like cutting pliers and just cut the tips off everything. Okay, so now the board is pretty much ready for pots and then connecting it to voltage ground in output and input. So, so now at this point you want to look at the actual picture that you can find in the instructions to see what kind of um, what kind of layout they recommend for your pots. Now when it comes to pots I would strongly recommend getting the kind of pots that are designed for pedal building which are these. Now I'll tell you why. 
First of all, they have these bent knees, which makes them perfect for installation on the back of a PCB, like so, and then going out of the board itself. Normal pots are quite a hassle to install into this kind of board, so having this bent knee set up here really helps with that. Secondly, these have plastic backs, which uh, prevent any grounding to any of the components on the actual board. Thir uh, thirdly, they are small uh, and very handy. And fourth, they have a really nice feel to them. They have a lot of resistance when you turn them, which is nice. And they just feel great to use. And they are very affordable if you get them from Taita like I did. The pots that we're gonna need for this are the A100K. We need three of those. A signifies them as being logarithmic pots rather uh, uh, as opposed to linear. What I'm doing here is this flap here, you want to take this and break this off because you won't, you won't need this on this actual installation. They break off quite easily. So just get three of those ready by breaking off this. And now you're going to install them like so. One goes here, one goes like so, and one goes here. This is what they're going to look like when they're, when you're finished. Uh, installing them. Now this is probably the trickiest part of the build because you are soldering in between a lot of components that you've already put onto there. So what I like to do is I like to get the board in a very comfortable position for me, like something like this, uh, where the I don't need to put any pressure on the potentiometer to keep it in place. And then just go in very carefully from the top here. Start by uh, soldering in one leg. And just check how it looks. It looks fine and straight. If it looks good and straight, you can go ahead and finish the other legs. There we go. That's your first pot installed. Solder number two here. There, you don't want to put it in too far because uh, you'd end up having it, it end up being a little bit skewed. There we go. That looks good. So that looks like a pretty well set up board. And in theory, it should not work. Um, it's not a bad idea to actually solder some wires into here. Just put some line volts in here, ground in and out. And just to see, plug it into an amp and see if it works. Um, but I'm going to solder on in the hope that I don't make any mistakes. And continue to the rest of the installation. So. So at this point we have a choice. We can either go and set up the rest of the pedal, which is going to be the foot switch and then the LED. I'm actually, before that, I'm going to install the, the pedal into the enclosure itself. This is kind of a tricky step because uh, you have to drill into the enclosure and you don't want to make any mistakes with that. Uh, the tolerances are kind of tight. So what I like to do is just place it in a place that I think I'm happy with. Hey everybody, I just want to break in here quickly and let you know that by installing the board in this kind of layout, you reverse the volume and distortion, meaning that the volume goes on the left and the distortion on the on the right. If you want the distortion to be on the left and the volume on the right, like it is on the actual rat pedal, uh, you're going to have to t flip the board basically 180 degrees. I just installed it like this because uh, I like this kind of triangle layout of pots. Uh, you can do that too, but if you want, if you want to keep your distortion on the left-hand side of the pedal, which I guess is a little more natural, you can go ahead and flip it. If you're planning on on putting a DC jack and or output or input jacks at the top, make sure you leave enough space for that. Uh, this kind of build, I would really not recommend putting your input and output jack on top. I'll be putting mine on the sides, but I'm planning on putting the DC jack up here. So I'll just leave a little bit of space for that. So what I like to do is I just like to go and I like to make um, lines around where I'm going to drill the holes. 
Okay, I think that's the best I'll do for now. So. Now, as I mentioned before, the tool that you absolutely need for this is a stepper drill like this. This having one of this will basically enable you to drill all your holes for the, the jacks and everything. That's useful, but if you don't have a drill press like me, it's helpful to have a smaller drill to get you started with the hole. Gives you more margin for error, and it's a lot easier than drilling into than drilling into aluminum with just the blunt end of a stepper drill. So I would definitely recommend having one of these to start. This is just a two millimeter high, high speed steel drill. And you'll want it resting on top of something tough so that you want to drill into your table, of course. So I'll just put it on top of a roll of duct tape and then go through here. Okay, so the pilot holes are made. And I went slightly off center with one of the top ones, but I don't think that's a big deal. I think it's within reasonable margins. So now we're gonna make these holes bigger for that. We use the stepper drill. Just gonna line this up quickly to see how we're doing. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be fine. Um, at this point, I like to turn around and drill from the other side just to make it more of a clean cut. Okay, now we got our three holes drilled. Okay, so they are slightly off center, but don't think it'll be that noticeable once we finish the installation. So, there we go. That, that's starting to look kind of like a pedal. Now I'm just gonna screw these in tight uh, quickly uh, so we can drill out the rest of this enclosure since we have our drill out. Now let's figure out how we're going to, where we're going to put the rest of the stuff in here. So if I go with my original plan to have a battery in here, then let's gonna put the, Basically everything below this line dedicated to our battery. Uh, this is the foot switch. This is the three, uh, whatever, the three PDT. So that could go in here and that would put the input jacks over this line. The LED somewhere maybe next to the Here are some quarter inch jacks. So uh, we can go ahead and drill the hole for the foot switch real quick. Mm. Uh, the next thing to figure out is where to drill for the input jacks. Now the one thing you want to watch out for when you're placing input and output jacks, just make sure that you have enough clearance between the board and with the foot switch and to make sure that the positive terminal of the input jack doesn't accidentally touch either the component or the enclosure itself. Carefully drill the pilot hole. And the other one here. Okay, one is a little bit higher up than the other one. It's not really gonna be that noticeable. We'll just do, we'll, we'll do a complete mock-up of all the parts right now, just to make sure that everything fits and fits nicely. We'll just loosely attach all these parts. Okay, there we go. Output and input jack, they're a little off-center, but eh, not a big deal. Yeah. Okay, so one thing you gotta be careful about is the clearance. Now, in here, we we're actually pretty close on the clearance. We almost, the jack almost runs into the foot stop. So, should have been a little bit more careful on that. But, looks like we were, uh, we were lucky there. So, just be, just be aware of that. Okay, there's one more hole to drill, and that is the DC power jack, which I intend to put up here on top. 
Yeah, we're pretty close here, so we want to be careful. Yeah, we need to drill one more step, so I'll remove the board before I do that. The only thing we have actually have left to drill is the um, LED hole. Now, this PCB for the foot switch comes with um, this hole for the LED here. So, yeah, I want to mark here a spot where we're going to make the hole for the LED. About there. We'll go ahead and drill that out later. So now, I've got to loosen everything back up. We're going to dr finish drilling the hole for the DC jack. So, there's not much soldering left at this point, so which, let's finish what we have to. We're basically just going to connect all the different components that we wired up. So the first thing is to put a board onto this foot switch. This is a 3PDT foot, foot switch, and we're using this special board from Taida. Now that, that is optional. Uh, if you want to wire your board just directly to the foot switch itself, you can find a lot of information about that. These boards are actually very clever in how they work. So let's let it go ahead and just wire this up. Uh, that's going to be fine. What's convenient about using these is that they kind of take the headache out of the wiring for you. You're not, you're not endlessly... Now soldering this much will of course cause your components to heat up quite a lot. So you want to take a break between and not directly wire all nine, uh, solder all nine poles. Okay, so now that's done, we can go ahead and solder on some components. So now at this point I find it convenient to actually just go ahead and install the DC jack with the wires it needs. So basically all modern pedals, all modern 9 volt pedals, they work with uh, what we call a BOSS setup, which is unlike most DC applications, the positive is the outside ring. Most applications have the positive 9 volts as the inside ring, but the outside ring is ground. Uh, it's reversed in this case. So I'm just going to double check and the long pole is the outer ring on this. So it means the long pole on this DC jack is our positive, so we're going to put the red wire in that. Definitely, if you if you don't have the exact same DC jack, just please double check to make sure which is which. Now, here comes a bit of a tricky part. We're going to install this before we do anything else. So that means we have to take off this nut and then feed this through here. Put the DC jack into the box like so. You roll the nut and then just screw this into place. Now, the board is going to be coming in here, so it might be a good idea to try to twist these terminals away from the board as much as you can. Like so, just to give ample space to the board itself. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, put positive 9 volts into the, into the foot switch. And that's pretty nice and clean. You want to keep these wires a little long just to make sure that they won't get in, they won't be hanging on top of any of the components afterwards. So now it's time to install the jacks. So let's go ahead and do that quickly. Okay, so very obviously I should have soldered wires to these before I installed them. That was my mistake, but so you should do that. So the input, jack in, ground, that's where we want to be. There we go, there's the input jack soldered. Okay, so that's the input jack soldered. Now let's solder the output jack. Okay. And then the, the hot wire of the jack out. Now it might have been better to do this earlier, but at this point, I think we have to think about the LED. Now the LED needs a resistor uh, that goes in here. I believe I specified a 270 ohm resistor. So we're just gonna pop a 270 ohm resistor in here. And now, this is one of the trickiest parts. Now is, comes the time when we 
install the LED. So now in order to make to install the LED properly, we're gonna have to solder it into this seat here and make it stand all the way up through the pedal itself. All the way up through the middle of the pedal. So let's just uh, drill a tiny hole in that big enough for a small LED. Let's actually pick up an LED real quick. I'll go ahead and use some of these small ones here. Go for a red one. So we're gonna probably have to use one level of the stepper motor. Oh god, this, this is off center. Look, this is not very, not very nice. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a it's a homemade one. It's got to look look the part, right? Now, if we solder it like so, it should stick out far enough that it just makes it out into the opening. Now, with these LEDs, you want to look at the length of the legs. The longer leg being the positive note. So what we're gonna do is, um, as you can see, one of the one of the slots here is marked with a plus. So make sure the longer leg goes into that and then we just solder it with legs as basically as high as they can go and hope that's far enough. Let's see if this works. You can see the LED right there. It would be nice if it came up a little bit more. What we could do is we could take this last nut off. That would mean this uh, the foot switch extends quite a bit but I'm not that bothered by that. Yeah, it's not too bad. So now the only connections we have remaining in this build is connecting our foot switch board to our actual effect PCB, which is of course the most fun part. So let's just get some nice black wire for that. Just a quick note here, I made these wires a little too short, so keep in mind that you probably want to make them a little longer. Okay, and at this point, we're ready to connect the PCB, the effects PCB, to the foot switch PCB. So, just gonna go ahead and trim up the wires a little bit. Then voltage plus goes into voltage plus. Ground goes into ground, so that's here. Out of the effects PCB goes into out of the foot switch PCB. And that was the last connection. So I guess it's connecting and testing time. So let's get this back into here and try not to mess up the wires any more than we have to. Now there's a small mistake in here, the wires connecting the PCB to the foot switch PCB. They're a little too short, I'm, I'm not sure how much of a problem it is, honestly. Um, they still, it, 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 it fits, I think we will be fine, but if we have any problems I'll go back in there and fix them. Now at this point I had some minor troubleshooting to do because the pedal did not function totally correctly. It turned out to be a simple soldering mistake. Uh, and I came back a couple days later having also done a little bit of light graphics with a paint marker. Okay, so now it's time for the sun test. Now I'm going to be using my shop guitar for this, which is a Harley Benton. It's actually an 8 string, but I'm going to be playing pretty much only the top 6 strings to try to give you an accurate estimation of what the sound is. So, yeah, as I thought, okay, so. There's a small problem in that um, the distortion and volume knobs are actually reversed, so I'll have to fix that. So until I can actually respray the top here and put the labels in the right place, I just changed it around for you so it'd be easier to see.
that's going to be it for me this time. Uh, we finished our build, with the exception of we got to remark the labels up here. Uh, but otherwise, pretty successful build. Um, I'll be interested to uh, put this side by side to a real rat. Uh, I have a feeling the filter circuit may not be 100% accurate or I, I, it's been a while since I've played the rat so I can't, I can't recall exactly if this is how it's supposed to work because it does drop the volume down quite a bit. But what you do is you, you just compensate with a volume knob. So um, other than that, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the outcome. Um, if you want to follow along, just um, links to everything in the description. Hopefully you'll be able to use this video as a semi sort of guide. Just with pedal builds, I'll advise you, especially if you're a beginner, it's very rewarding, it's very fun, but be prepared for things to go wrong, for you to have to troubleshoot and to have to figure things out. Uh, that's how it's always been in my pedal building. So I was lucky with this one, went fairly well, uh, only very minor issues uh, and pretty cool rat. So I'll be so I'll be posting some more builds. Uh, I've got PCPs here already lined up for both a Tube Screamer and a OCD Overdrive. Those will be my uh, next builds coming up. Uh, but if you made it this far, I just want to thank you so much for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you next time.